Hello everybody and welcome to chapter 6. We're gonna learn about exponential and logarithmic functions. So chapter 6.1 is gonna deal with the exponential function and its inverse. So first we're gonna discuss the key features of an exponential function. Then we're gonna talk about the inverse of the exponential functions. And then we're going to learn how to graph these functions as well as other concepts revolving around that. So let's get started. First of all, we need to discuss the key features of an exponential function. Down below, I have two graphs, which we will discuss in a moment. So an exponential function has the following form. Y is equals to B to the power of x, where b has to be greater than 0 and b cannot equal to 1. This form has the following features. So first, it has a repeating pa pattern of finite differences. So what that means is unlike for polynomial functions where we got to a point where the finite differences were the same, we're actually just going to be following a pattern. So instead of coming to a concrete solution, we're going to be finding out that our finite differences are following a particular pattern that is probably never going to end. With that being said, an exponential function, its rate of change is increasing proportionate to the function for b is greater than one. And its rate of change that is decreasing proportionally to the function for zero is b is greater than zero but less than one. So that may sound a little bit confusing, but essentially all that's saying is that if you have a graph like this, where b is greater than one, its rate of change is gonna be proportional to this graph. Same thing goes for this graph. So it'll be proportionately decreasing just like this. So now let's get to the actual physical uh, attributes of the function. So first of all, it has a domain where x could be an element of any real numbers. So there is no point where the graph is not defined. However, its range is restricted to the point where y is an element of all real numbers, but y is greater than zero. If you're wondering why that is, just think back to what an exponent actually means. At uh, no point can we get a negative number, since if we got a negative number, that means we could find the base value by taking a either like a square root of it or a third root, just taking the root of it. And we know we can't possibly have a root of a negative number which is why we have y has to be greater than zero. With that being said, we have a y-intercept at y equals to one. Again, the reason for that is, is when x is equals to zero, anything to the power of zero is one. Uh, we also have a horizontal asymptote of y equals to zero, which I explained already, and the function is increasing on its domain when b is greater than one. So as we can see here, it's increasing and it is decreasing when its domain is that b is greater than zero, but less than one. As you can see, it is decreasing. So take some time to process that before we move on to the next part. So if you're good with that, now let's talk about the inverse of the exponential functions. So right now, we don't really know how to take the inverse besides just flipping the x and y values. You should have learned that in grade 11. To take an inverse, you simply just substitute, like exchange x for y, and then you solve, right? So if our original function was y is equals to b of x, the inverse would be x is equals to b to the power y. So with that being the case, we can now analyze this function. So now everything got kind of flipped. So its domain is now x is an element of all real numbers such that x has to be greater than zero. 
However, its range is unlimited. So y is an element of all real numbers. So again, if you recall back to grade 11, you should remember that the inverse flips the domain and range of the original function. So this used to be an old domain and this used to be our old range, which perfectly fits. Now, since we've done that, we know that now the x-intercept has to equal to 1. Before it was the y-intercept is equals to 1. Now we also have a vertical asymptote at x is equals to 0, when before we had a horizontal asymptote at y is equals to 0. Next, we know that the reflection of y equals to b of x about the line y is equals to x has to equal to our inverse function. Again, this is something we learned last year. Since taking the inverse, since reflecting something on the y equals x uh, line, what we're doing is we're flipping the x and y values, which again just flips our domain and flips our range. That allows us to take the inverse of the function. Lastly, we're going to talk again about whether or not it's decreasing and increasing. And luckily for us, that stayed the same. So it is increasing on its domain when b is greater than 1. And it is decreasing on its domain when b is greater than 0, but less than 1. Again, we can now look at these two graphs. This was our original exponential function. And then we, for example, drew the line y is equals to x, flipped all of our values, and now we got this as x is equals to b to the power of y. Same thing goes for here. We had our original function, then we drew the line y is equals to x, flipped all the values, and now this is our new x is equals to b to the power of y function. Don't worry, we will get to graphing them sooner or later. That being said, here is the slide on that. So when it comes to graphing these functions, it is very important to understand the key concepts of exponential functions. So what I mean by that is that you have to understand these properties over here. If you don't understand these properties, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But don't worry, just simply glancing over them every once in a while will keep your memory fresh and you'll have no trouble remembering how this and this look. Again, it is also very important that you understand the repeating pattern of finite differences, like what that means in an application of these graphs. So what it's saying, right, is that essentially, if we were ever to actually just see the table of values that we've been using to plot these points or to plot this graph, you should understand that you cannot find the finite difference. You could find a pattern for the finite differences, which is how you could always identify an exponential function. Again, now, with these being said, we could talk about how we can find an equation of the form y is equals to b of x from either a table of values or from a graph. But again, those are pretty easy. So let's do that. So for example, we are given a table of values, right? And what I would recommend doing is find whether or not you have a point where x is equals to one and we have some kind of y value. The reason for that is uh, you actually have such an easy time figuring out what our base was. So for example, I found the point 1 and 3. So now we can substitute 1 for our x value and 3 for our y value. So what we get is that 3 is equals to b to the power of 1. You know that anything to the power of 1 is just the original number itself, which would mean that the only possible value for b would have to be 3. So our equation is actually y is equal to 3x. If you feel like maybe you messed up somewhere, just take that base value you found and then substitute it back into the equation. So for example, our next point was 2 and 9, right? So we would take 3 to the power of 2. What is that? That's 9. Okay, so we got the correct answer. However, this kind of strategy only works really well if the function has no transformations applied to it. 
if it does have transformations applied, it'll be a little bit difficult for you to figure out what the base function was just from the graph or from the table of values itself. However, from a graph point, we will talk about it later, it's not that difficult. Again, knowing an equation, we can now easily graph the exponential function. All you have to do is select 5x values, which can of course and should include 0. Now you should simply uh, substitute those values into the equation, figure out what your 5 key points are, and then connect them all using a curved line. This is how you learn how to graph any function that you haven't learned before. So this strategy works really, really well if you're just learning about a new type of function. Now, we only have a few examples left. So first of all, it's asking us to find which of these functions is exponential. And then if it is exponential, find an equation for it. So let's look at our three uh, table of values. For the first table of values, we see that we have 1 over 16, 1 over 4, 1, 4, and 16. So as I told you before, I'll try to identify where we have 1 as our x value. So over here, we have 1 and 4 given to us. So what I would do is I would say again, 4 is equals to b to the power of 1. Therefore, b has to be 4. Now we have b. Uh, so now we could write the equation as equals to y is equals to b to the power of x. Now let's check if that is true. So let's take negative 2. 4 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 16. That's good. Uh, 4 to the power of negative 1, that's 1 over 4. That's great. Four, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so that's great. Uh, and then 4 to the power of 2 is 16. So we have found our exponential function, and we also found an equation for it. Another way we could have done this is found the differences, the finite differences, and if they seem to have a pattern to them, that means it's an exponential function. So let's do that for chart 2. So let's find the X, or sorry, the finite differences. So 10 and 6, that's minus 4. 6 and 2, that's minus 4. 2 minus 2, that's minus 4. Negative 2 and negative 6, that's minus 4. So our finite differences are negative 4. As I said before, our finite differences can't be found in an exponential function, which would mean this is not an exponential function. This is actually a polynomial function of degree one. It's a linear function, right? Where are, we're just going down by four each time. So we sorted this out. Another key way you could find this is that again, we're looking at zero and we know it has to be one. However, here it's two, which would immediately imply that this is not an exponential function of the form y is equals to b to the power of x. Lastly, let's look at this one here. Again, let's identify 1 and 1 over 2. So, solving that, we get that our base should be 1 over 2. Now let's go through each of the values and check whether or not that is correct. So negative 2, or sorry, 1 over 2 to the power of negative 2 is 4. That's good. Negative 2 to the power of negative 1 is 2. That's great. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Wonderful. 1 over 2 to the power of 1 is 1 over 2. And then 1 over 2 to the power of 2 should be 1 over 4. However, we see here that it's 1 over 8, which would mean that this is not an exponential function. Therefore, we cannot find an equation for it. So out of these three, the only exponential function we found was the first one, and its equation was y is equals to 4x, or 4 to the power of x. Now let's look at question two. It's asking us to sketch a graph, or sorry, sketch the graph of the function three to the power of x, then sketch its inverse on the same grid by reflecting f of x in line y is equals to x. 
So let's do that on our graph paper. Okay, so let's do this question. First of all, I'm gonna insert our graph. There you go. We know that this is y. Oh, come on. This is y, this is x. Arrows everywhere, because that's extremely important. Next, let's uh, divide our graph. Again, this is a little bit annoying. Perhaps yeah, if you want me to skip these parts, so just have a prepared graph all the time, uh, leave a comment below. And if enough people comment, or even one person comments, honestly, I'll do that. So we have our graph all prepared. And first of all, let's graph our base function. So our function is f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. We could identify five points, as I said before. You could do this on your calculator, or you could do this in your head. So first of all, we know our first point should be 0, 1. That's immediately a given. Then let's just take negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. So 3 to the power of negative 1, 1 over 3. 3 to the power of negative 2, 1 over 9. So that's good. I'm going to link these two. Then 3 to the power of 1 is 3, and 3 to the power of 2 is 9. So now we found our five points. Let's graph them. So at negative 2, we had, uh, or negative 1, we had 1 third, which is around here. At negative 2, we had 1 over 9, which is really close to our x-axis. At 1, we had 3, and at 2, we had 9, which would be all the way up here somewhere. So now we could connect all of these points using one smooth curve. Uh, promise you that was one smooth curve, okay. Again, since we know this is an asymptote, we need to make a straight line that is following this axis, but never actually touching it. As you can see, this is extremely messy. I'm gonna try to clean it up. Oh, that didn't work, that's great. Pretend it's perfect, okay? We're not gonna talk about it. There you go. That's our two arrows. And then, come on, once more flying. That was so close. Can't do it. Pretend. There you go. Sorry again, this is just me not... Can't possibly doing that with uh, this tablet I'm using. So next, we need to actually plot y is equals to... Uh, x right so that is probably around here somewhere i'm trying to um, let's see this looks good this is a really thick line but that's okay nobody's judging it again this is our one two two yeah that seems good using this graph we know that we'll be reflecting our y and x Value. So this was x, y. So now we're graphing y, x. So we had 1, 0. So now 0, 1 needs to be our new point. Let's use green. Then we had 1, or negative 1, 1 third. So now we have 1 third, negative 1. So 1 third, negative 1. Then we had negative 2, 1 over 9. So now we have 1 over 9, negative 2. We also have uh, 1 and 3, so now we have 3 and 1. And lastly, we should have 2 and 9 here, so 9 and 2 here. With these points, we can now connect them. Again, there's no shaky hands in this video i promise you so this function over here should be the inverse of f of x so we could write that as f negative one of x right and this actually equals to three to the power of y 
So this was f of x is equal to 3x, and this is f of negative x, so f ne inverse of x is equal to 3 to the power of y. I have to say, although I've written this down, I don't recall any like formal explanation that this is the correct form. So don't worry about that too much. This chapter is just testing your understanding whether or not you could understand what the inverse function is. So honestly, if you want to label it, I would label this as x is equals to 3 to the power of y. Hopefully that you solve those questions yourself and do the explanations later. But with that being said, we have finished chapter 6.1. As you can see, we have a lot of homework questions, but don't worry. A lot of them are literally like two seconds worth your time. Like one, two, uh, pretty sure five, seven, and eight are all really simple. Like seven and eight are genuinely just matching the graphs to their equations. So that shouldn't take you more than like a minute maximum. The important ones to look at, it would be 10, 14, 15, 16. So those are actually testing your understanding of inverse functions and exponential functions. Nothing there is difficult. It's genuinely just graphing simple functions and finding out its physical properties. Question 20 is also super simple. So do not worry about that. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or leave a comment down below. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye bye.